break season, and if you're planning to go down to the beach and have a crazy time, well then you have a man named Sam Ingram to thank for it. No, he did not invent the beer bomb. <laughs> The story of spring break as this week in college or now even in high school when you have a crazy time, preferably in a warm place, preferably by an ocean, probably with some booze that you may or may not be old enough to drink, all started in 1936. That was the year that Sam Ingram, who was a swim coach at Colgate University, not to be confused with what I brush my teeth with every morning and night, and sometimes after a garlicky lunch, decided to take his team down to Fort Lauderdale in order to train at the casino pool, which was the only Olympic sized swimming pool at the time in beautiful, or kind of weird, Florida. Two years later in 1938, the city of Fort Lauderdale, in order to drum up a little bit of local business, decided to host 300 collegiate swimmers for a meet at that casino pool. Thus began, ladies and gentlemen, the spring break tradition. Apparently, whenever you put college people plus water together, they have to get drunk. It's like a law of nature or something. Time Magazine actually reported on college spring break for the first time in 1959, quoting from that article, 20,000 spring vacationing collegians who began taking over the town two weekends ago behaved in the same sunstruck, beer-propelled way as have their predecessors for the last 20 years. They grilled themselves medium rare all day, beach boozed all night and blew the foam off the early hours by decanting sand sharks. By the 1980s, 370,000 students were flooding Fort Lauderdale every year, that original site of spring break, a trend which was helped in no small part by the 1983 hit starring Tom Cruise. Spring Break. Three years later in 1986, Spring Break moved from the big screen to the small screen when MTV began first live broadcasting from various Spring Break locales, which later on in the 90s taught me as a child what a wet t-shirt contest is. But in more recent years, with more attention being paid to things like property damage, bodily injuries, and oh yeah, excessive drinking. Local governments like Fort Lauderdale or Fort Lickerdale, as it used to be known in the 1980s, have kind of tamped down on spring break revelry. Although, if you did see the 2013 movie Spring Breakers, I don't think there's any sign that PCB is stopping. I couldn't handle it. Give me a beach, but with nobody on it. Who's fun? But I wanna hear from you, where you live, does this kind of spring break wildness happen? And have you ever gone to a crazy spring break beach? Let me know in the comments below. If you are like me and are no longer in school and don't have a spring break anymore, I feel you. I mean, I, I think that we need to get Kid President on making spring break just an, a global holiday. We all need one, really, just maybe not not at Panama City Beach. If you want to hear an expanded podcast all about spring break and things that I didn't talk about, like the health aspects of all that spring break drinking and possible sex having, you should head over to stuffmomnevertoldyou.com. And hey, be responsible, people.